Uh, some of the features of our cabinets are finishes which again minimize volatile organic compounds and off-gassing. We've selected appliances with the very highest of ratings from the Energy Star uh, website that the government has for energy efficiency. And you'll notice granite countertops, which is a natural material. And use of Anderson 400 series windows, which are very, very energy efficient to help, again, with energy usage. And you'll also notice every single light in this house is a fluorescent light bulb, or has fluorescent light bulbs. Not only the lamps, but the decorative fixtures as well. Now, the only exception is a few track lights, which are on dimmers. But other than that, every single bulb in the house is a fluorescent to keep that cost for utilities down. I'm going to start in the bathroom here. I did a story for a local newspaper article recently on green building and we focused on the bathroom and when we really took the time to look at it, it was amazing how many green things are included in the bathroom alone. For example, marble tops, which again is a natural material. Um, as I mentioned before, the paint on the walls is from Sherwin-Williams, a harmony line with no volatile organic compounds. Uh, low flow faucets, which minimizes water usage. If you look on the floor, that's a natural limestone-like material. So rather than vinyl or something else, we're using a natural material. Uh, in the bathroom, if you want to take a quick peek, there's a dual flush toilet. It's kind of hard to visualize, but if you push that handle down, you're going to use only 8 tenths of a gallon of water for a normal flush, which is half what most toilets use. If you lift up on the handle, it'll use about 1.5 gallons. Again, a little bit less than a normal toilet. So it's very good in terms of water conservation. It's an eco-quantum toilet from Mansfield. Also, if you look high on the wall up here over the shower, uh, not only will you notice the fluorescent lighting, but also there's a vent up there. We do not have any regular bath fans. That vent is tied to a mechanical ventilation system called a heat recovery ventilator. It allows us to evacuate the air from each of the bathrooms. There's also one in the kitchen. So we're constantly taking the stale air out of the house that has extra moisture and bringing in fresh air to replace it. Now those two streams of air, when they get changed, uh, go across each other and we're actually in the wintertime taking the heat from the outgoing warmer air and transferring it to the incoming colder air at the rate of about 85% efficiency. So we're keeping an efficient system, but yet monitoring the, the, any uh, bad smells in the house or odors as well as chemicals and, and the moisture, most importantly, to manage that. Uh, also in the floor is a radiant system. Uh, again, you can't see it, but there are radiant tubes underneath the tile powered by a geothermal heating and cooling system, which is heating the water for the floor uh, very, very efficiently. Now I'd like to show you a few more of the technical features. Uh, I'm going to walk you into our conference room where we have a lot of things on display and talk to you about some of the things we've used to construct this house. Then we'll go into the utility room and show you the geothermal furnace and some of those kind of things. Before we go into the conference room, here's the Energy Star certificate. Every single one of the homes that we, we build is Energy Star certified. Uh, we've been doing that for over 10 years in terms of uh, having homes certified. As I showed you on the other certificate, that's very important to us and uh, more importantly important to our customers in terms of peace of mind that they know their house is built well and that it does in fact far exceed any government standards for energy efficiency. Now I'll show you an example of our insulated concrete forms, uh, also known as ICFs. And basically what it is, I kind of like describe them as like Lego blocks. We literally build a basement wall out of these forms like this and they come in forms that are actually four feet long. But this sample uh, shows how they're constructed. So we build the basement out of these blocks. Then we put reinforcing steel in here going both directions, vertically and horizontally. Then we fill this intersection with concrete. And in the case of the outside, we'll put a true rubber waterproofing membrane on there to keep any water from coming in. Um, far superior to any type of normal sealant that goes on a basement wall. And then on the inside, uh, we can cut out a box here and put in a box for electrical wire and run the wires down a little chase that we create in the foam here. And then the drywall goes right on the face of these forms. As you can see, there's a furring strip inside here, which is attached to the, the webs that hold the blocks together. And we have one of those furring strips every eight inches, and we can screw our drywall right into those. Or if they happen to be on the outside, we could screw siding on, or a wire mesh for stucco, or what have you. They even come with a special ledge for bricks if you have bricks on your home. Anyway, this is a wonderful system. It has an R value of R25. And we've used that for all of our basement walls here, which are 9 feet 9 inches high, which gives us a very nice space as far as the finished lower level. Um, these are the same blocks I mentioned outside that we used on the, uh, the barn, if you will, 14 feet tall. So this is a wonderful system. Um, been around quite a while and really very well engineered and works terrific. 
I'd like to move on and show you the wall panels that we use, actually wall and roof panels. In this case, we've used structural insulating panels, which is also evidenced by this display cross section here. And this is a small cross section. They come from Inselspan, which is uh, the manufacturer of the panels. They're kind of like an ice cream sandwich, only instead of ice cream in the middle, that's extruded, excuse me, expanded polystyrene with an OSB uh, plywood like material glued and laminated to each side. And they come in panels as big as 8 feet wide and 24 feet tall. So it's a wonderful structural panel. Very well insulated and a six inch wall like we've used here. It's about R25 again on insulating value. And our roof panels in this house would be 10 inches thick or about R45. So every, all these areas between the floor joists are sprayed with expanding foam. Every joint and connection is sealed or caulked in foam. So it's literally as airtight as we possibly know how to make it. One of the reasons why this house is so energy efficient. Now we're kind of down in the catacombs of the house or the mechanical room if you will. All the important stuff to make everything work well. As you'll see here, this is the water furnace. We do have two geothermal heating and cooling systems in the house. Uh, actually, one's heating and cooling, the other one is heating only for the rating heat. But this is the main heating and cooling system, and it's their top of the line system called Envision. Been using them about five or six years, and it's so efficient that uh, we're looking at approximately $4 a day on average. If you figured out all your costs for heating and cooling for a year round for this house, which is about 4,000 square feet, it's going to run about $4 a day or somewhere in the neighborhood $100 to $120 a month total year round, which is your heating, your cooling, and your hot water. We've also used a, an energy, or excuse me, a um, humidifier if we need to add moisture. And you'll also notice that all the joints in our ductwork is completely sealed with a sealing tape or mastic. We want to be sure those ductwork, duct is, that ductwork is sealed and that the heated, heated or cooled air does get to where it needs to go.